Hello everybody, you stumbled upon the YouTube page that talks a lot about a little. Uh, we're on a, another vinyl review today. So today, you know, just like the other ones, we like to set it up easy, nice and easy, right there. You can see it. It's right here. We got another classic album though. It's Drake's Take Care, his second album. It won Best Rap Album of the Year at the Grammys. Uh, it came out on November 15th, 2011. There is a little bit of interesting, interesting facts about this. Apparently The weekend says that he gave up three songs from the album House of Balloons, which is a part of the trilogy. Um, apparently he gave up three of his songs to Drake so that he could have them for Take Care, and he helped him write two other songs. So The Weeknd helped with five total songs on this album, whether it was giving it to him or helping him write it. And when I was listening to it, I remembered hearing stuff about that, and then... A couple songs I was like, whoa, this sounds like a weekend song. Why is Drake singing it? So it is kind of clear, but let's let's just get right into it. You guys know how it goes. We're going to go through the songs, average them, give the album a score itself, and then we're going to look at the artwork, look at the sleeves, look at the disc. I'll tell you right now that it sounds good, so we'll just get into it. The first song we have on here is Over My Dead Body. It's got... Chantel Kervasek, Kervasek, Kerviasek, Kerviasek, I don't know how to say your name, but you know, you got an amazing voice and you really, really make this song a whole lot better. Uh, he's kind of looking back at his last album. Um, like I just said, Chantel has a great verse in it, um, or her chorus is awesome. Drake's bragging about who he's becoming, and then he even says, I still got 10 years to go, huh? And he wasn't lying, you know, he's still around. This came out in 2011. It's 2022, do the math. 11. So he's been around longer. That song, I got a 7.3. It's a very good song, good intro. It's kind of slow, kind of nice to just open up an album to. Uh, one thing that I did have a problem with is this is the first album that isn't like a full story all the way through type of thing. Like we're not getting with Bryson Taylor where he's talking to the girl the whole time or we're not getting Kendrick Lamar giving us a whole story of his situation in the streets. We're not quite getting that, but it's still, it's, like I said, it's a classic rap album. So, after that, you go into Shot For Me, it's the second track, and this is one of the songs that I said, it literally sounds like it's The Weeknd, but it's Drake. So, I do like when Drake gets into his R&B bag a little bit, and he sings and stuff like that, but this song literally sounds like it should be on, like, maybe kiss land or i mean house of balloons would make sense if this was on house of balloons and that is one of the songs that was supposed to be on house of balloons a shot for me i said it literally sounds like the weekend and you know he does have his vocals in the background when he's doing the chorus and stuff but that's that's about it man the weekend is barely in it it's just it's it'd be better by the weekend is how i see this song i gave it a seven after that, you got headlines, and this is just like a, this is like, ooh, if you were in high school around the 2012, 13, 14 years, and you played a sport, chances are headlines was a part of your warm up mixtape. Cause like, it's a hype song. It was our warm up for basketball when I was in high school. It's still hype today. He's going through his out accolade or accolades and all that stuff. And, you know, this was my favorite going into it. It's a very hype song. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there is a quote that I pulled from it where he says, I live for this. It isn't just a hobby like that. This is when he was trying to prove himself. And this is why Drake was so good at this time is because he was trying to prove himself. He is at the top and has been at the top pretty much since this album. Maybe nothing was the same is what put him at the top. So like... His music that he's been making recently is not as good, in my opinion, and, you know, music's probably becoming a hobby for him. Either way, I gave Headlines an eight and a half. It's still a lot of fun to listen to since it came out till now. It's a timeless song at this point. And then we get into track four, Crew Love, which has The Weeknd featured in it, and it is, like, it's really The Weeknd song. But with a Drake verse, that's literally what this song is. It's the weekend starting off. It's the weekend with the chorus. It's Drake's verse, and then it's the weekend again. It's it's a good song, you know. I really like it. This is another song that was supposed to be on House of Balloons. Um, I do like when Drake starts to rap. There's a little bit of an added drum to like make it a little more intense. 
so it's a good song you know i'm not hating on it but it definitely does feel like it belongs in house of balloons so i gave that one a 7.8 still a good song and then we get into track five take care featuring rihanna this is a classic absolute classic doesn't matter if you're a hip-hop fan pop fan you know it, these two worlds come together right here rihanna is just an absolute goddess and i'm not talking about just her looks she has an amazing voice and drake compliments it very well in this song you know we know he can sing you know all that stuff so i did write down that i might not have rated this one as high even though realistically this is like the best song on the album regardless of which way you slice it musically it is it's got nice uh hints of like reggae island type music with some steel drums and all that that's why you get that weird switch up where you got the guy like uh, 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 you know doing that in the background but it, it's because they're channeling that type of music that they were using for the beat makes a lot of sense song got better over time for me i kind of liked it before i absolutely love it now i gave it an 8.9 you know and you guys can call me basic for rating this one the highest but realistically it is the best song that is on this album after that, you go into Marvin's Room, which is, like, apparently the cry song for my generation. I don't believe it. There's a lot of better songs that you can cry to, like, for example, by Bryson Tiller. You can't really tell it, but that's Trap Soul right there. There's a lot of good songs on there. So, you know, it is a relatable song. It's about him being, you know, under the influence late at night. He needs somebody else to talk to, even though he's got a room full of people. He wants this one specific person to talk to. He gets a hold of her. She's telling her that she is like better than the dude she's with. I'm just saying you could do better. Tell me, have you heard that lately? You know, it's a relatable song to that notion. If you've ever been in heartbreak or you absolutely love someone and you're trying to like go through life without them type of thing, you get those nights where you want to pick up the phone and be like, oh my God, like you deserve better. I could be better for you, da, 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 whatever, all that stuff. So it's a relatable song in that nature until he says paid for uh, flights and hotels. I'm ashamed, you know. So, <clears throat> the song kind of, it's not the same for me anymore. Marvin's Room, I gave it a 7.3. And then we go into track 7, Buried Alive Interlude featuring Kendrick Lamar. And if I'm being like 100% honest with this rating, I don't even want to count it towards the album. It's not Drake's song. It's not. It's literally Drake doesn't say a damn thing in the song. It's all Kendrick the whole time. It's a really good song. It's a very good verse by Kendrick about them meeting up and like kind of talking business and, you know, stuff like that. So like we get the storytelling from Kendrick that we would expect. But where is like a verse from Drake giving the other perspective of what that meeting was like or something, you know? So hmm. <laughs> I gave it an 8.3, but I deducted a point because Drake's literally not in the damn song, dude. So I gave it a 7.3 overall. I just think it's weird if you have a whole track dedicated to somebody else on your album, especially when Section 80 had just came out. And damn, I don't know. You shut your mouth, Mason. I don't want to hear it. Don't give me no sass. So that was Buried Alive. Gave it a 7.3. Eight is Underground Kings. It's a good hype beat. I love his delivery in it. It's kind of simple, but for the most part, you know, it's got nice little inflection points where like he does a little sing and does a little, you know, like hesitation or speeds it up really quick, you know. So it's nice, you know, he's got, he's really talking his heat on there, man. I gave it an 8.3. Underground Kings is a good song. Track nine, We'll Be Fine featuring Birdman. Uh, Birdman really just at the end it's telling Drake to hold it down, you know, like keep up the business, keep keep business booming type of thing. Um, I love this beat and Drake does a really good job with it. It's an awesome song. Um, you know, it feels like he's actually explaining like that his life is so fast that like he can't wait around for people. He can't form great relationships because of how fast his life is moving and all the stuff that he does and all that stuff. So, you know, I like it. 7.9. And then track 10, Make Me Proud, featuring Nicki Minaj. This is another song that was like a staple when it came out. Uh, it's a hype, fast beat. Love the delivery from both of them. And, you know, when those two hopped on a song in the early 2010s, it was pretty much a heater no matter what. It just, that's just how it happened. This song, unfortunately, kind of, I've kind of grown out of it a little bit. 7.6 is what I gave Make Me Proud. 11, Lord Knows, featuring Rick Ross. This 
beat is triumphant as all hell, and I love it. So, Rick Ross has a nice verse in it, too. It's also, like, good. You know, Drake's got some awesome lyrics. Um, like, he, I pulled out one line where he says, If all I hear is me, then who should I be afraid of? Love it. Love it. Taking shots at the industry. Letting them know, y'all. Y'all got to be more original if you want to get to my level type of thing. Love it. Ross's verse is sick. 7.8 for Lord Knows. Track 12 is Cameras slash Good Ones Go Interlude. Um, cameras is very slow. Um, and there's some hi-hats in it. The t -t 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 you know, that type of thing. If you take those out, it would be a very good R&B song you know but he doesn't really sit drake doesn't really sing on it that like that at the beginning part and then good ones go when that one starts um the weekend is background vocals in there and <clears throat> he um good ones go is supposed to be on house balloons also which i find interesting so with these two parters, I like to rank both of them and then give it a rating overall. So for cameras, I gave it a 7.8. Good ones go, I give it a 7.6. If you're good at math, better at math than I am because I still for some reason needed a calculator to figure out what 7.8 and 7.6 averages to. 7.7, .7, duh. So yeah, 7.7 .7 for cameras slash good ones go interlude. It's good, it's slow. Definitely... A song that could have been on House of Balloons, but I don't really see it as much as that one, as I did for Shot For Me, and, um... Except for Shot For Me and Crew Love. Like, those two belong on House of Balloons, it seems like. And you got Track 13, Doing It Wrong, which I do have another little fun fact about. Um, it's got a good R&B vibe to it. Drake's singing, he's in his R&B bag, which I like occasionally. Uh, super slow um relative like si relatively simple beat but drake's voice like gets to shine in this um apparently while he was making this song he had stevie wonder sitting in the studio and if you guys don't know who stevie wonder is he is a blind musician who is one of the greatest musicians ever he's from the motor city absolutely love the man he seems like an awesome genuine soul so apparently he's sitting in on that, and at the very end you got a little harmonica. It doesn't quite sound like a harmonica from what you expect because it sounds so smooth. But that's Stevie Wonder on the harmonica, oddly enough. So that that's kind of interesting. I gave the song an 8.2. It's a really good song, actually. Like I feel like nobody really talked about this song when it came out. Nobody really talks about it now. So doing it wrong is definitely like a go check that song out. It's a really good one. Track 14 is The Real Her. Featuring Lil Wayne and Andre 3000. That's a stack lineup right there. Um, this song is kind of slow, you know. It's He's got, Drake has like a sing rap delivery in this one. He's talking to like a specific girl, but he wants to let her know that like, hey, girls in Houston, girls in Vegas, girls in Atlanta, they love the way it goes down. They like me. So you need to like step up your game maybe, you know. So... You know, I really like it. Wayne and Andre add, like, very good substance to the song to give you more of a story and kind of fill the gaps that Drake usually has when he tries to tell a story. I'm not trying to take shots at you, my guy, but that's just how it goes. The Real Her, I gave it an 8.4. Uh, this is also one of my favorite songs on the album, personally. Like, I didn't rank it as high because I'm trying to be objective, but this is personally one of my favorite songs on the album. I have two, and I'll say them when I'm done. 15 look what you've done this is another really good song and honestly i'm gonna add it there there are three songs that i absolutely love on here that i didn't give that high of or i gave them high ratings but i didn't give them the highest ratings even though i like the song more uh look what you've done he's telling a real story about his mom um and i believe it's also like about his aunt grandma and or aunt uncle and grandma are also a part of it pretty much saying like look what you guys have done you've supported me through all these times even though it hasn't been perfect even though we fought even though you know all that type of stuff that normally goes on in a normal family he's just like yo i still love you guys thank you guys for being there for me you know it's a very touching song he mentions his dad in it and that he can't go to canada over some child support that wasn't paid and drug charges so you know and then he says boohoo sad story so like don't dwell on that type of thing he wants to give praise to the people that were there for him really like that song 8.4 that's another one where it's like 
nobody talked about it and nobody is talking about it still. So then you got another one that everyone should know, um, H-Y-F-R. If you guys know the acronym, you do. I'm not going to say it. I'm trying to stay a little child-friendly on here. So um, that song has Lil Wayne in it. Um, you know, there's that portion at the very beginning where Drake is, says all my exes live in Texas like I'm George Strait or they go to Georgia State where and then he just goes crazy for like 15 seconds of just like no breathing at all is what it seems like we all used to do that in high school and it was a great time we'd all be gasping for air like midway through the damn verse so you know that takes some talent to do um I love Wayne's verse you know it's overall a hype song but it's kind of it's kind of not as good as it used to be you know um, in my opinion, I give it a 7.8. It was a hype song when it first came out. Not as hype anymore. 17 practice this one. Um, the weekend helped write it actually. And he is, um, I believe he's kind of in the background of it. I don't remember off the top of my head. I didn't write it down and I should have wrote it down. But uh, knowing that the weekend helped write it. it oh, no, no, no. He's not in it at all. The weekend helped write it though. And at the very beginning when Drake's saying, I can tell that you've been practicing. I really feel like if The Weeknd would have sang that part alone, it w it really would have added to the song. I gave it a 7.2. It's like not a bad song. You know, none of these songs are bad. They're just not as good as others. And that explains the, the last track, track 18, the ride perfectly. It's The Weeknd helped write it. The weekend is in the background with vocals. The beat is a little different, but I like it. You know, it's got it's kind of childish Gambino vibes is what I said. Um, so, you know, I gave that song a seven. And weirdly enough, seven is the lowest rated song on here. We don't have any six point whatevers or sixes or five point whatevers. Um, even though I don't really want to count Buried Alive because it's literally a Kendrick song on a Drake album. But, you know, whatever. So, The Ride and Shots For Me both got a 7. You know, they're not bad songs. They're just, the rest of the album is really good. And I have higher expectations for Drake as an artist. So, overall, though, this album got a 7.8. You know, that's a, it's a good album. It's not... It's not what I used to think, though. I thought this one was just, like, an instant classic. It's going to be timeless. It's not as timeless as, like, Good Kid, Mad City is or, like, 2014 Fort Sills Drive is. You know, there's just some songs that, as you get older, you realize they're not as good as you thought. And that's okay. You know, we all grow as people. So, <clears throat> overall, I got a 7.8. Like I said, good album overall. It has some classics, man. Here it is. Now you're used to that. It's a little boring. It's just got the track list. You can't really see it because I got a new laptop and the camera's a lot brighter on it, which is cool. I like it. Uh, so take care. This is the cool thing though when you open it up. Um, if you're if you are an Apple Music user, you will recognize that because um, <clears throat> when you open up the album on Apple Music and go to it, it has like here. This is pretty much what you look at if you have Apple Music. You see this. You see him sparking it. And then it just kind of goes like this. And that's what you see if you have Apple Music and you watch or like listen to this album. Um, you know, I thought that I thought the inside looks very nice, even though the outside is literally the same as the digital. But so I give it a six. You know, like I said earlier, it sounds very, very nice on vinyl. Um, Take Care sounds terrific. I don't know why it just really does. I uh, gave it a 7.8, you know, because it sounds just as good as it would on digital for the most part. <clears throat> and now the part that all people love, I mean, I assume because I love when I get a new vinyl and I go to look at the disc, regardless if it's just like a boring disc or a fun disc. And we've had all fun discs so far and it uh, it ends here. You got a boring black disc. It's OK, though. You know, you're getting this album because you like this album. You're not getting it because of outside marketing stuff like a like a cool disc that's got like gold etched in it or something like they no no no. this is just a very good album and you want to listen to it on vinyl then you go get it you go get it you know and don't don't take away the vinyl rating is like a true like vinyl rating because you know i'm sure they got some other cool discs out there but with just the black disc i give it a five um so then we got the artwork at a six disc at a five sound at a 7.8 Overall, it's a 7.8 for an album, so do the math. 
add it up, divide by four, you got 6.65, you know, and like I said, don't take that as like, a, oh, it's, uh, it's probably not that great of a vinyl I shouldn't get. No, it still sounds good on vinyl. It's just kind of boring. That's like the disc is a little boring. The artwork's a little boring. There's no extra stuff to get you extra amped up for this album. It is just a good album. And, you know, if you like the album, go get it on vinyl. It sounds good on vinyl. That's all I got to say about it. So my favorite songs, or my least favorite songs, the worst songs in my opinion on this album are The Ride and Shot For Me. I gave them both a 7. My best rated song on here is Take Care featuring Rihanna with an 8.9. And my personal favorite songs are, um, I want to make sure I get them right because I didn't write them all down. Underground Kings, The Real Her, those two songs I absolutely love. Um and look what you've done that is the other song that i would put on there look what you've done is a great song so all that being said overall 7.8 good album vinyl review 6.65 it's just because the disc is boring really that's all there is to it but i really appreciate you guys watching this if there are any other albums that you would like me to do that maybe aren't a part of my collection Leave a comment. If you know me, you can text me, obviously. Um, yeah, if you guys like this, sauce me a like, subscribe, you know, all that cool stuff. I hate sounding like a beggar saying that stuff, but, you know, you got to say it. So uh, I'm going to give that wheel a little spinny spin, and we will find out what the next final is. See you guys later.